And so I want to thank Will, despite my ability to hook every, almost every shot, uh, to, to thank Will Marquez for organizing the golf tournament. Once again, it was a great success, a great time of fun and fellowship together. Thank you, Will. And despite my ability to hit every golf ball to the left, there is something about being outside, being in nature, despite where your golf ball goes, that changes you. Being in nature, the majesty of nature. When we open our hearts to it, when we listen to it, it has the ability to change us as any good teacher does. And nature indeed is a teacher. Perhaps that is why Job says, ask the animals and they will tell you. Ask the earth, speak to it, and it will teach you of God. Of course, you know already today is Earth Day, so that is exactly what we're going to do today. We are going to speak to the Earth. We will listen to it. We will make dirt, that's right, dirt, our teacher. And we do, we turn our attention to dirt. Because the truth is, and I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, but you are, and I am, we all are, dirt. We are dirt. I mean, that's what the Bible says. That's what Genesis says, as we heard in our story this morning. That is the proclamation of Ash Wednesday, when we don crosses on our forehead of ash. Our Ash Wednesday liturgy asks us to remember that we are dust. And to dust we shall return. But nevertheless, despite our humble origin, as we move through Ash Wednesday and that proclamation through Lent and Easter, we become something remarkable, something more than just mere dirt. We become, or at least we can become, holy ground, ground through which life and blessing blooms, through which miraculous futures flower. But how? What transforms plain dirt into holy ground? What transforms us into the same? To learn that, we must turn our attention to both Scripture and to science. The first dirt mentioned in our parable this morning is the hard-packed dirt of a well-worn such dirt is not alive. It is not fertile ground. The seeds that fall there, they will not grow. And they will not because that dirt is just too full of dirt. <laughs> it's too full of itself. The molecules of dirt are so compressed together that there just is no space. There is no room among those molecules for molecules for anything else to exist or to grow. And in the same way, our lives can become too full. And when it is, we become like hard-packed soil. When we fill up every minute, every empty nook and cranny of our lives with busyness, with tasks, we become that hard-packed soil, unable to offer or to nurture life. What hard-packed dirt needs, what our hard-packed lives need, is to become 
pockets and have within us pockets of Sabbath-like space. That is what happened in Genesis. God took lifeless dust. But before it became life, God created something else within that dirt, within that dust. It was empty spaces. There were nostrils. There were lungs that God first created in that dirt. Empty space. So that God could breathe into that empty space. God's own spirit and breath and air. And it is then that that dirt came alive. God called that person created Adama. If you know Hebrew, Adama means dirt, earth. In the same way, if we are to be filled with life and offer it to others, we must incorporate into ourselves some room within, some space, some time. So that God can breathe God's spirit into us. And when we create that space in our hearts, in our lives, for God, for something, for someone else other than ourselves, amazing things begin to happen. Amazing things come to life. Soil science teaches us that the most fertile soil on this earth has plenty of room in it. So much room that one square foot of soil, roughly the size of this very basket, one square foot of soil, fertile soil, contains 93 million organisms in that amount of space. That's a lot of space. We got to create a lot of room for God if we are to become the same kind of fertile soil. Those organisms, that 93 million in that small space, they're nematodes and they're mites, they're millipedes, they're earthworms and ants and larvae of all kinds. Not only do those animals create even more extra space within that soil by their burrowing around, they also break down the organic matter, leaves, twigs, and moss, which enriches that soil with nutrients. The second type of dirt that is mentioned in the parable is rocky soil. <coughs> rocky soil. That type of dirt is characterized by being hard. That's what rocks are. They are impervious to any and all outside influences, that type of soil is not fertile ground, as our parable says. Rocks, they can't absorb anything. Rocks have little flexibility. They have no give in them, and so they can give little. So little that nothing can grow in them. And watch this. I happen to have here some rocky soil. I'm going to add to it even some more rocky soil. You know it's rocky because you can hear that clank clank. God always pours blessing and spirit and life upon us. But when we ourselves are like rocky soil, God pouring that spirit, that life-giving spirit, you see what's happening to it? just can't absorb gifts. It can't absorb the gifts that God continuously pours upon it. Rocky soil cannot absorb the gifts, the blessings that others have to give it, which would enrich it. But rocks are too hard. They're too impervious. If we are going to become holy ground, we need to be a little less rock-like, a little less impervious to others, to outside ideas and ways 
We need to be a little bit more open to absorbing, incorporating into ourselves the gifts of others. Because it is those gifts like the new members that we just accepted into our church which enrich us just as that 93 million others bring to the soil. The last unproductive soil mentioned in the parable is the overextended soil. Unlike the rocky soil, which gives nothing, this overextended soil gives everything to everyone but itself. The parable, in this parable, the soil supports a wild, lush, tangle of life, weeds, thorns, including the good seed. But soon, all that life gets choked off. An interesting choice of words by Jesus. At first, out of that soil, life, it flourishes, and it flows with all that giving, but soon that flow of life stops. The flow of breath, spirit, it runs dry out of that soil. Such overextended soil, soil that is always sending energy out, becomes completed, depleted within. Caretakers, those who care for another loved one, have a 50% higher rate of illness than others their age. Often a caretaker's own health declines faster than the one that they are caring for. If all of our energy goes outward without any regard for self, soon that flow, our health and vitality becomes choked off. And we become depleted in spirit and in body until physically we can't help the other. We can't even help ourselves. Interesting in this parable that both the soil, which is too full of itself, like the hard-packed soil, is unhealthy, but so too is the completely selfless soil. Finally, the last soil of the parable, when it speaks to us, when it teaches us of how to be holy ground from which Life emerges a hundredfold. What does it have to tell us and teach us? If we listen to this dirt, it teaches us that to serve best, to become fertile, holy ground now and into the future, to be that for God's world, we must create a balance between self-care and selfless service. We must create in our lives Sabbath-like spaces in which we can receive as well as give and be restored as well as restore others with God's breath and spirit. The soil teaches us that hospitality, that welcome, that sharing our resources, our space and presence with others as the soil shares with 93 million others, that is not some theoretical, some altruistic good. It is, in fact, a practical and a mutually beneficial good. For these others we welcome have gifts to offer. They contribute to our relationship with God. Without them, we become less. We know God less. And we have less to offer others in this world. So on this Earth Day, this Adama Day, may we cherish this Earth and all it has to teach us. May we always be willing to learn from it, to listen to it, to respect it as our teacher. For after all, its fate is our fate. Its blessing is our blessing. Its health is our health. And why? Because we are dirt. Amen. Amen. <laughs>